Good morning and welcome to PSJ Java Chat, your morning chat with your favorite PSJ ISD instructional technology integration specialist, where we discuss edtech tools and trends with invited guests and, of course, our morning coffee. In episode 5 of Java Chat, January's district tech integrator Lorena Herrera Torres shares her background and how she decided to become an educator, explains the struggles that happened when starting teaching during COVID lockdown, and expresses her love for her teachers, students, and co workers. Well, hi, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our fifth episode of Java Chat. Today, we're going to be interviewing our integrator of the month of January for this year. And this is Ms. Lorena Herrera Torres from Escobar good Elementary. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> so, Ms. Lorena, um, congratulations on winning our District Integrator of the Month of January. And let's Thank just you. start off with a simple question about telling us your educational background. Um, okay. So, I, well, I'm going to go back to my personal stuff, but I was born in California. Um, my parents were migrant workers at the time. So I was always going back and forth from California to Mexico. Um, and that's when I, um, when my passion for teaching started because I would see the, t the teachers that would actually put in the effort to teach um, and go out of their ways, like to catch us up because we were in Mexico for like five months and then we would go to the US. So like we were learning something completely different. So the teachers that actually made an impact in my life were the ones that um, inspired me to become a teacher. Very nice. So what part of Mexico did you grow up in as well? Um, it's a small town in Nuevo León, Linares, Nuevo León. Oh, nice. Nice. So I've heard of it. That's where my parents are from. But and I was born in Davis, California, and we were going back and forth up until my freshman year of high school. That's when my parents decided to um, stay here in McAllen. Wow, but like the the drive from from Nuevo León to California, it's a little drive. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yes, it was like more than twenty four hours road trip. <laughs> and my dad wouldn't even like to get a hotel, so we would just kind of sleep oh, at no, rest area. Through. Oh my goodness! The times. <laughs> I know those drives. I know those drives well. <laughs> I love road trips. So. She does. <laughs> So, Lorena, how did you get into technology? I know I I love your story about your background and how you you know decided to be a teacher, but then now how did you decide or how did you get into the technology aspect of it? Um, I actually didn't even know I was that techy up until I started teaching. Um, like to to me, I guess it just came as like second nature, like. I don't know. <laughs> um, but then my coworker started telling me like, oh, you're very techy and you're always figuring things out. And I'm like, OK, I guess I, I am good at this. <laughs> um, but I actually like before teaching, I didn't I didn't really know that I was like techy or that I liked um, technology. But I um, well, my first year teaching was actually COVID year. So 2020, I started teaching in August of 2020. So it was when we started from home where I was work teaching from home. Um, and I kind of had to figure things out on my own. Like I had my mentor teacher, but obviously she was um, at her house. So sometimes she, it was through teams that she would help me out, but everything else, I kind of had to figure it out on my own. But I mean, we all did whenever it was COVID. But to me, I felt like it was a double hit, like, well, um, being introduced introduced into the teaching world and then like everything had to be on like te on the computer technology using technology so i guess that also helped me be more comfortable with using technology good good um hey lorena so kind of going back to what you just said about your friends and your colleagues saying that you were like the techie person and you didn't really know it but but everybody could see it obviously um, share with us your experience about using technology for instruction. Um, so this year, um, what I've been like my favorite um, technology that I've integrated into my classroom has been the using the iPad for the Sharon Wells books. And with the montage receiver, I know um, Valentin came and showed us. And ever since that day, I've been using it and I love it. I love that I can um, walk around the classroom and I'm able to see what students are doing and I'm able to um, be in my small group. Like I don't like before I had to be in over here in my teaching area in the front of the classroom all like 
not all day, but like when I was teaching and now I'm able to walk around or I'm able to sit with my, uh, with my small group while I'm still like projecting what I'm doing on the board for everybody. Um, so that's been very neat. I love it. So I was reading on your, uh, the writing that, that Mr. Tejerina, your CIT for your campus was saying, and he was mentioning a tool that you actually like using. Tell me about your experience with Canva. Is that like your favorite tool? And if it's not, what is your favorite tech tool that you have utilized for teaching? Oh yes, I forgot about Canva. Yes, <laughs> I love Canva. Um, I like it because I'm able, that, that's what I use um, for my class dojo announcements. I just think that like, I guess I'm a visual person. So I think that parents are gonna pay more attention if they see a nice picture with the like, announcements or things that are coming up in the classroom um so i love using it that's what i mainly use it for like to do the um classroom announcements for class dojo or to send flyers out i think i just think parents pay attention to it more than whenever they just see a long post of writing or bullet points so i love using canva for that awesome is there any other tech tools that you like to use as well Mm, I think um, I was actually just telling um, Valentina about the other day that that he came by that this so this um, six weeks um, we couldn't get we haven't gotten our Sharon Wells books so we're like okay let's try to improvise and I didn't want to run my copy run copies of my books because I didn't want to finish my copies so I was like well I mean we're shifting into technology and the kids are going to test online so it, and we're getting closer to the testing days. So it just makes sense that I just like start like teaching from online or they just see it on the computer. They don't have the te the Sharon Wells books on their with them. So I uploaded the the book, the Sharon Wells books for them and they're high. They're able to highlight and everything. And that's how we're using it. And we're, we have our scratch sheet of paper, like all they have is a scratch sheet of paper and their computer. So they see the book on the computer and over here on our scratch sheet of paper is where we do all their strategies, um, which is the way that they're, they're going to be tested. So. I think um, that's what I've been liking. And it's only been this week that I've been using it. But <laughs> what I've noticed too is that I like to improvise. Like for example, this on Monday, we found out that we didn't have the Sharon book. So I was like, oh my God, what do I do? So I like just uploaded on, on their Google Classroom and we went on with it. Like, I wanted I to get real quick on that question because um, to me, that's exciting, improvising and everything. But um, was, how did it go? <laughs> It went pretty good. Um, the kids catch on with the things quick. Like they learn from it. Like it's an app that I don't re even remember what it's called. Lumi or something, Lu uh -huh. something with an L. Um, and the kids like learn fast, like all of them, all of them. Nobody like stays behind. Everybody catches on to it. Everybody knows how to use it. And then I love to see that they also help each other out. Like me and my coworkers, like we help each other out. They do too. Like if somebody is stuck or doesn't know how to work it, um, they'll go, they'll go and help their partner. So I love to see that as well, that they're able to help each other out. But like it's, I mean, it's been two days that I've been using it, but it's been working. Like they're able to highlight, they're able to do their strategies and they love it. Like they're able to adapt quick. Are they using their finger? No, they use, uh, some of them have brought their personal mouse or some of them just do it with the, with the Chromebook on the map. Okay. Awesome. So that was kind of a challenge. That's kind of goes with our next question was what challenges have you faced with using technology in your classroom? That wasn't really a technology challenge, but you faced that challenge with technology. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that. Yes. And I think, I mean, sometimes um, issues do arise, like where like the Wi-Fi is not working or something like that. And you just improvise, you just work with what you have and you keep going. We can't stop the teaching. So <laughs> we always have a plan B just in case. Yes. <laughs> the Wi Fi usually goes out all the time. <laughs> we hear it all. No, it actually hasn't. But it does always come back. <laughs> it will come back. Where'd it go? Yes. It was hungry. <laughs> um, hey, Lorena, um, going kind of like on a, I guess, more of a, like a, a more of a personal question how has technology changed uh your view in life uh for your personal time um 
Well, I think in my personal life, I mean, we're all always with our phones, right? We're always using our phones. It helps. They can be very helpful and very useful. Um, I also like my watch a lot. Um, I, one of my hobbies or personal things that I like to do is I like to stay active. I like working out. Um, so I like that I'm able to share my workouts with my friends and family. So we kind of motivate each other. I'm like, okay, let me see. My sister closed all her cir circles. I need to go and get a, a run in or get a workout in. So I think, I mean, we're just surrounded by technology everywhere. Um, so we just have to um, move along with it and learn, learn, learn to use it, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's fun, right? Like uh, I, I, like having a like a like a Fitbit, right? And then it kind of tracks your 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 steps and whatnot. And then I like how you can yeah. uh, add add friends on there, so you can compare your yourself with like a, a good friend of yours or like you said your family. And so it's always it's it's a good way to stay motivated and and whatnot. Yes, and we can act. We can we do competitions on the Apple Watch, so we. <laughs> That's what I like to do. What? How do you do competitions on the Apple Watch? It's with the activity app. Uh huh. So you add your friends and or whoever you want to, through through your contacts, and then like it's there. Like you can compete with them. Like it's for a seven day period. So whoever closes the most circles during the seven days oh, wins. Nice. <laughs> Maybe that's something yeah. that Andrew needs to pull out because me and me and Marco are Android people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I was just like, well, how did that look like? So now let's talk about. So you talked, we already talked about your background. We already talked about what is your favorite tool. And we talked about how you started teaching and how you basically came on teaching utilizing technology because everything was virtual. So I want just, I want just to. Pick your brain again. What inspired you to use technology in your classroom? To me, I already kind of know the answer, but what what made you? I'm like, okay, you know what? I do need to use this because this why. Um, I think just seeing this that the students like it and seeing that to them, it's like something so amazing. Like they love learning with technology. Mm -hmm. I think that it has been very inspiring because I think if they wouldn't like it, then I probably wouldn't use it. Um, but they like it. They um. It, it makes it more fun for them. There's more things that you can do. Um, I think I know some teachers are like scared of using technology or they just don't want to give in to technology. But I would say like just give it a try because the students will love it. And then um, I mean, some things work, some things don't. Um, so you just kind of learn and go along with um, with whatever works for you in your classroom. Um, but yeah, I think that the, seeing that how much the students get engaged in the technology um, is what inspires me. And like, that's why I continue to use it. And like I said, they catch on to different apps that you introduce to them really quickly. So we, um, so I try to try different things and see what works for them and what works for us in my classroom. And then. so basically it has enhanced your learning for your, for your, for your students. Yes, awesome. it has because they're engaged right away. Awesome. Um, another yeah. app that I really like using is um, Jamboard. Um, sometimes like whenever to start a lesson, I, I love using Jamboard to start a lesson. Like I'll put a picture that will give them some background knowledge or for them to make connections. And then they have to add sticky notes um, with what connection they can make. So I like to see how they're all like active with it. And they're they're able to see everything, everything that everybody's posting. Awesome. I love that inspiration and what inspired you. And I did lose track of the last question Val asked. If Did he ask what inspired or did he ask, is there advice for teachers? No, I asked about the uh, use of technology in the classroom. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I lost <laughs> track. Um, so I, we kind of, I would like to know if you have any advice for a teacher that is reluctant to integrate technology in the classroom. What advice would you give someone who's like afraid to try it or doesn't want to try it um i would say just give it a try see what works for you see what works for your students um 
it's actually fairly easy once you start like you have to like mess with it that's what I do all the time whenever I don't know how or like there's always help out there for um any any tool that you don't know how to use there's always help that you can search up or you can just like learn mess with it I try I that's how I learn best like just messing with it and see how it works and then you pass it on to your students and your stu I promise you your students will catch up they'll learn more than um than us teachers um so yeah just give it a try see if it works for you I mean if it doesn't you can always go back to whatever you were using before but give it a try <laughs> right and it's not easy always the first time either like you know I I would maybe add to that and say give it a couple times Mm -hmm. yes. because it does take a minute for the students to learn. But like you said, they're sponges. They pick it up fast and they help each other. And also for the teachers, yeah. try it a couple of times. When we started this iPad uh, uh, mirroring situation, there was a lot of issues. It's getting better, but we just tell the teachers, keep on trying, make sure that you update everything because there, there, there have been some connecting issues. But when it says working, like you, you're, you, you, can, you were just telling us how amazing it works out for you to be able to move around. Yes, and the kids love to see you. They're like, oh my God, they they were so amazed the first time I used it. Now it's like they're used to it. But they were so <laughs> amazed how I was like behind them and they, I was still doing showing the work up on the screen. Ah, you make me so proud. <laughs> <laughs> that that is so awesome. Thank thank we, you. We, thank you guys for your for all your help for coming in and um showing us how to use it. Thank you for taking the time to teach us. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And we're very glad that that um that you're utilizing it in the classroom and that um you know everybody's benefiting from it because you know we we'll go out there and we'll we'll put on these these little trainings and and the the only thing we can hope is that that people uh, try it and if for some reason it doesn't go well the first time keep trying it just like Valentine was just saying just keep trying because uh, it's a process, you know, uh, doing anything in technology is a little bit of a process and we just need to keep trying and hope that everything goes well. Um, yes. So thank you, Lona. And, and I, I just want to ask, uh, so you've been utilizing technology in the classroom and it's been very evident. It's been very evident from Valentin going to go visit you and also from your colleagues like Mr. Dad, Ina. Uh, I, I want to ask, what is one of your proudest moments in using technology in the classroom? Oh, I think one of my proudest moments was on Monday that they came and gave me the certificate. I was not expecting that at all. And then my <laughs> students were so proud of me. So that was like the best. Like I was proud of myself, but my seeing my students were clapping. And then after that, they were like, Miss, you're so, um, me motiva, Miss, quiero ser como usted, porque usted, usted se agarró un certificado. And they were, they had already said that when Mr. T had given me the one for, for Esco. Escobar, but then whenever they saw that I went for the district, they were so happy. They were happier than I was. But it was so <laughs> I, awesome. You gave me chills. Yes. And I always tell them, I was like, todo lo que yo puedo hacer, tú también lo puedes hacer. I mean, that's the reason why I got into teaching because um, I wanted to be that teacher that believes in them, like some, like the teachers that believed in me when I was little. So I'm like, todo lo que yo puedo lograr, tú lo puedes lograr, tú puedes lograr más co the cosas. Oh my God, you're going to make me cry, lady. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> so this question is going into that, and I think you pretty much answer it, but that heart of yours is evident through through teams, through this video conferencing that we're doing. But what do you think sets you apart from other, other educators? I'm like, I, we know you're using technology. We, we, we hear the passion that you have, but... Tell us what do you think sets you apart from the other. Let's say we can we can talk about the other fourth grade teachers in, in Escobar. We can talk about Escobar. We can talk about anybody. Like what sets you apart? I think what sets me apart is like going back to like the reason why I chose teaching. It's because I want to be that teacher that believes in them, that helps them. Um, I care for them, and more than just like the the curriculum that I need to teach like I care to be their teacher like not just like what I have to teach them but like I like making connections with them I like for them to see that I like I'm a real person because sometimes they see they see their teacher and it's just like okay this is the person that is going to teach me what I need to learn to pass the test like no this is a person that cares for you this is a person that believes in you this is a person that wants the best for you 
Um, and I think it's so inspiring because sometimes I think we see them and we're like, oh, they're just little kids. They're like, no, like that stays with them. Like that stayed with me. Like the teachers that I had in elementary, like I still remember them. I still remember how they made me feel. So it's gonna stick, it's gonna stay with them. So I love, um, it's like a quote or something that says, the students won't remember what you teach. They'll remember how you made them feel. So I think that's like my philosophy with teaching that I want to, for them to feel welcome, for them to be cared for. Um, of course, I want them to learn, right? Because that's part of caring for them. And I think that's part of why I use technology because like I said, they like it. So if it works for them and it's helping them learn, I'm gonna use it. Wow. It's actually, you're teaching them social emotional learning. That's what they're gonna remember. That to me really touched me. Thank you, Lorena. Yeah, well, I love that because that that's if you have them and they know that you care for them and love them, you're mm. going to be able to teach them anything. You know, that's amazing. Yes. You are amazing. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching today. This is the end of our interview with Lorena Herrera Torres for our CIT for January at Escobar Elementary for the District of PSJISD. Now, I just want to do a little plug in in there as well. We started. Uh, our new uh, videos in YouTube. So if you want to learn a little bit of the technology that we've been discussing today, we have some tech shorts now available. We uploaded eight videos, they're already in there. We're gonna be posting it at the end of this video so you can just click right into it and go into that playlist. Thank you very much for joining and we'll see you soon.